so Monster Hunter Rise has been out for a good three months. The devs have been giving out free content, there are new monsters to fight here and there, and I have been somewhat keeping up with the end game content. However, the big question lies, which is that is Rise better than World or is World better than Rise? Before I want to make this comparison, I do want to say that it is kind of unfair to compare the two games. This is because you have two different directors developing either game. You have Yasunori Ichinose for Rise and Yuya, I'm gonna butcher this part, either Takuda or Takuda, Takuda <laughs> for World. Yuya Takuda for World, I think that's how you say his name. <laughs> Both of them were making the decisions for the development of either game. We don't know what kinds of discussions they had, especially the decision for making Rise a Switch exclusive. Even though the game is under the same franchise, many people just straight up compared the two games. After having only played World and now Rise, I don't really feel like it's fair for me to make the comparison. On the other hand, I do believe that there are people like me where they only got into World because it wasn't a console exclusive. And those people are now thinking whether Rise is better than World. So I want to be talking about it from the perspective of being a person who played quite a lot of World and then jumped on to Rise. Let's just start with the hottest topic, which is the graphics of this game. Now, just like many others, including me, unfortunately, when I first saw the graphics of this game, I felt disappointed. Not massively disappointed or so disappointed that I can't look at this game again. <laughs> I was just meh. <laughs> I will say that maybe the graphics of World have spoiled me, which I believe a lot of World players or maybe just your average gamer would complain about it having better graphics. Whenever they would see a graphical downgrade because of obvious system requirements that can't match stronger consoles or PCs, they will be disappointed to the point of not buying the game. I too felt that way as well. I was doubting whether I should get this game or not, I even said in a previous video that the graphics are kind of making me doubt my decisions on playing this game. However, I come back to the most common debate when it comes to games, which is graphics versus gameplay. There are some games where the gameplay is much better than the graphics of the game. Obviously, I don't want to just see moving to these squares on the screen and call this Monster Hunter. But I feel like gameplay is more important when it comes to games like this. Let's be honest here. The gameplay of Monster Hunter is fun and engaging once you've learned how to play the game. Using all these complex weapons, building different armor sets, and fighting all of these monsters is really fun. To the point of not even worrying about the graphics of the game. Like I'm not expecting a full on cinematic experience of Monster Hunter. I'm really just here to fight different monsters, build different armor sets, and the graphics aren't that bad. Sure it's not as pretty as World, but trust me, you get used to it. You won't even think about it too much. Which is why I can overlook the graphics of this game. It's just like how it is with Minecraft. The graphics might be just pixels, but the gameplay is fun and satisfying. Also, I kinda just hate seeing some people say, Monster Hunter World looked amazing. Why did you go back to having bad graphics? Now again, I also thought about that as well. However, after having played Rise for some time, I'd say I've gotten used to the graphics. To the point of not even caring about it and just having fun with the game. Alright, enough of the graphics, let's talk about the gameplay. Comparing World with the Iceborne DLC against Rise, I feel like the combat has become much more fluid in Rise. There are a few weapons where their movesets have barely changed, something like the Greatsword where the moves are exactly the same, except that you cannot do the slingshot burst move to quickly do the true charge slash. RIP Greatsword mains. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you have the hunting horn where the movesets are completely different, making the weapon easily accessible to new players. To the point that whenever you jump into a lobby, you would most probably find someone using the hunting horn. Unlike in World, where you might see the occasional hunting horn player here and there, which we then thank them for existing for providing the support. You also have the addition of wire bug moves and switch skills to change a couple moves at your disposal. I feel like that has helped make combat feel much more easy to use, on top of adding another level of combat. However, I think the reason why I feel like combat is easier 
is only because of the experiences that I've gained from World. It's just like how if you're good at a FPS and you want to play another FPS, then you just transfer those skills over. So I would say it would probably apply the same way for any player moving from World to Rise. However, if you're completely new to Monsanto and you're getting Rise, I would say that you might struggle a bit. Just like how I or some other players started off in World. Building armor sets is pretty much the same, except that the decorations can now be forged instead of randomly obtaining them. However, charms, or now called talismans, are randomly obtained through the melding pot, which you unlock later in the game. I feel like this isn't really any different than it is in World, where World would have random decorations and set charms. But all seeing the fact that I can forge attack decorations does put a smile on my face, because that decoration was literally impossible to obtain unless you have amazing luck on your side. We also can only obtain high rank gear in Rise. I'm thinking that we'll get master rank like how it is in Iceborne later down the line, but for now we don't have that. There's also some new skills like Rapid Morph to play around with. Quick Sheath actually affects the Longsword EI Sheath move, so there's quite a lot to play around with, just like how it is in World. So if you've already built plenty of sets in World and kind of want a new spice and a reset, then Rise will help you get your fix. Like, I know you can always create a new file in World, but if you jump on Rise, then you get that proper feeling of starting anew, if you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I've said plenty of nice things with Rise. Are there any bad things? Well, the only thing that I could think of is the difficulty of this game. This might be just me, because as I've said before, when it comes to transferring skills from world, but this game felt easy. I believe maybe some other players will agree with me here, but throughout my time starting Rise and reaching all the way to the end, there was never any huge obstacle that I came up against. Back in World or even the Iceborne DLC, there was always this one monster that would stop me from progressing any further until I was forced to make an armor set for the sole purpose of destroying that monster. In Rise, I blasted through the game with ease. Again, it might be because I know what to do when it comes to fighting monsters. However, I was expecting a monster to stop me from progressing any further. Sadly, I will have to say that the game does feel easy. Which can be great for any new players, but it can be bad if you're an experienced player wanting a challenge with the new monsters. Investigations, daily and weekly bounties are no longer present in Rares. Instead, you can select the missions that are always available and the bounties are replaced with optional subquests. I see this being both good and bad. It's good because when I was playing World, I had a slight problem with the investigations. Whenever I wanted materials from a monster, I would get myself investigation, complete one, get my materials, and leave the investigation. I would never complete the investigation to the point of running out of that investigation, which became a problem. I would stock up on so many investigations and eventually would not be able to get any more, which in turn would not allow any new investigations to appear. I would then have to go through the trouble of deleting them. However, in Rise, I no longer have to worry about that problem. All I need to do is go to a mission or a quest that is available and just load it up. I always found it weird in World that you could not replay a mission that you already completed. This is kind of the same with daily and weekly bounties. Having only time limited bounties that give you some rewards every day or week can be a pain, since those rewards are quite small as well. Whereas Rise has optional subquests that are always there. They're not limited by time and they refresh every time you complete a subquest. Now the bad thing about the investigations no longer being there is that the fights that you select are always set to a specific location. There are a few exceptions. Some monster locations do change, but the majority of my hunts have always been in one location. Also, the other monsters that are in the locations never change. It can get kind of stale fighting the monster you need materials from, only to know that the same monsters are gonna come in as well. That might be my problem when selecting your quests in Rise. There's nothing too random in the quests other than how the monster moves, which means that the fights can become 
quite predictable. Other than that, there have been a bunch of quality of life changes, like being able to see the monster on the map at all times, meaning that you no longer have to collect footprints and other monster markings to follow those broken fireflies. My god, they were annoying. No more hot drinks or cold drinks, which I know people were disappointed in, but I found that just mundane or just there. It's just an additional step. So removing it allowed me to just get straight into battle rather than worrying about drinking a potion every time. The dog is great for transportation, for quickly getting into fights, and also use it for sharpening my weapons in battle while avoiding the monster. Whereas in world, I'm stuck running around the map and sharpening your weapon while fighting a monster is a no-go. Wire bugs are fun to use, both great for moving around the place and for quickly recovering from monsters attacks. Although I do miss the clutch claw and ice spawn, being able to clutch on the monster and ram them into a wall was fun. However, you can do that with Wyvern Raiden. Wyvern Raiden takes over the mountain mechanic and world. I'd say both are fine, but I feel like Wyvern Raiden is an improved version of mountain, giving you more control whenever you're mounted on the monster. Like I kind of found it annoying just mashing a button until the monster gets tired and then you get the final hit to knock down the monster. Although the slightly annoying thing about Wyvern Raiden is that it cannot be disabled. Whenever it gives you the chance to Wyvern Ride, you will always Wyvern Ride. It can be a mess at the start to the point of it being annoying, but you just get used to it. In the end, is Rise better than World? If I was forced to make a decision, as much as I don't like comparing the two games, if I was forced on the gunpoint <laughs> to make a decision, is Rise better than World? I would actually go for Rise. Rise does feel a bit better, but that might be just because I've gotten used to combat in World and I have transferred those skills over into Rise, and that's why Rise does feel a bit easier than World. So I'm, well, I'm not too sure. <laughs> not really too sure. I do like Rise in terms of fluid combat, but I do like how World is a bit more difficult. So yeah, basically, if you want like fluid combat and just, you know, fighting new monsters, get Rise. And if you don't get Rise, then you're just missing out. It's just that simple. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you found the video useful in some way, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more Monster Hunter Rise content to come a bit later on down the line, or even some other videos that I plan to make. <laughs> so be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, you should also, you know, follow me on my Twitch. Link is down in the description box below, where you can talk to me live and see me play some games. And it'll be great to interact with you there. So be sure to follow me there. And finally, my Twitter is down in the description box below as well to see any other channel updates. You know, if you want to be updated to whatever I'm doing, then Twitter is probably the best place. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. Okay, that happened. <laughs> I'm like, I could survive this. <laughs> Maybe. <sighs>